All right, all right, guys. Thank you for tuning in to Teaching Transitions, where we show you people that have transitioned from a traditional path to a path of their choosing and how they navigated their wilderness. This is your host, Netta Dowdell, and we are here with Keon. How are you today, Keon? Pretty good. How are you doing today? Doing well. So I've just really been seeing kind of your evolution across social media. And then we went to school together also. So really wanted to share this with our audience today. So tell us what exactly you've been up to. What have you accomplished? What are you proud of at this point in your life? I, I feel like that's a very broad question. So as far as like how, how specific you want me to get? Just whatever you would like to share. So uh, what is in a, let's, let's say like, what is an accomplishment that you feel like makes you who you are in this moment mm, i think i think right now what's uh my biggest thing right now that i would say that, that sometimes i have to stop and say wow is um I, I have a house in la i have a house in atlanta i live in la and i'm always in texas <laughs> <laughs> right so um, that's that those are some of the things that you're proud of or at this point that's what you identify with correct Correct. Um, so just growing up, I always, I always wanted to go outside, right? That was like my whole mission. And mm -hmm. so like, I remember growing up, I would ask my mom, like, hey, can we go here? Can we go there? She'd be like, no, we're busy. We got this going on, that's going on. And so a lot of times um, she would be leaving out and she would say, hey, you don't have your shoes on. You can't come with me. And so I started sleeping with my shoes on. I'm like, no, we got to I'm going. <laughs> Look, I'm going. I had no other clothes on, but I had my shoes on. So she didn't it. say, I had my shoes on. And so as I got older, you know, subconsciously, I never really thought about it. But once I started like becoming a young entrepreneur at, a, at an early age, I started buying all these shoes. I was buying every color, every, every shoe that came out, I was buying like, all the Jordans, the Air Force Ones at the time. I was like middle school, high school. And I asked myself like later, like, why am I buying all these shoes? And then when people would ask me, they was like, hey, why do you have so many shoes? I say, well, I just buy enough shoes to have a, one to go with every outfit. And it was like, but why? And I was like, I don't know, <laughs> I never thought about it. And then when you think about it, it's just like, ah, okay. Because to yeah. me, these were my ticket out the door. So, mm -hmm um in life you know we all have something that we strive towards strive to do like my whole thing was always going outside and and, and leaving the house and going to see what else is out there so now that you know like i said i i was living in atlanta and i left but i bought a house before i left and i'm living in la now right and like, you know like traveling I, and i do a lot of work in texas um in regards to like djing and hosting events and stuff like that so it's just like it's crazy now when i sit back and think about it, like dang like I really made it out that door and I, I'm really living in some of the best places. Right. Know? Like three options. <laughs> right, right, right. So um, it's, just, it's just crazy. And then, you know, I'm blessed to be in a situation now to where it's like, I don't have to leave the house. I, I wake up when I want to, walk over to the kitchen, sit down, do some work. Um, after I do some work, uh, hey, if I want to go spend six months in Atlanta, I go spend six months in Atlanta. Or if I want to go spend some time in Texas, I'm going to spend some time in Texas. Or if I want to go to Cambodia or just some yeah, random, right, you know, yeah. I have that freedom and flexibility to do that, right? But at the end of the day, that work got to get done. So that's going to give us that opportunity to do that. Right. Um, I'm also wondering, what is your job title or what is the title for your career at this point? So after I left, um, after I left Baylor, well, actually while I was at Baylor, um, I was having just a random conversation with a guy and come to find out the guy works for Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. had no clue at the time. I knew, I knew he was like in like an area where they were, but I didn't know he worked for him at the time. Um, got offered like an interview with them. And I turned it down. I was like, yeah, I said, I don't want to work. Like my whole thing was I <laughs> never worked for anybody. Right. Right. And, and at this time, I'm full blown entrepreneur. Like, if you knew me, middle school, high school, college, I'm hundred percent entrepreneur. I'm like, no, it ain't a, it ain't a job. It ain't a dollar that can can take me off these entrepreneurial streets. And um, the dude kept saying, you know, I want you, I want you. So he's like, I'm calling you in a couple of days. Uh, he called me. He was like, I want you to do an interview. And I'm like, nah, I'm not for it. And keep in mind, this is Amazon. This is 2015. This is before they were right. big. So I, I haven't told this man like, no three times. <laughs> right. When when you said that, I was like, 2015 Amazon. Yeah. Let me think about 2015 Amazon. It's like their growth exploded. 
And it was like, nobody really expected it to hit like, like that, like that, like, honestly. Right. So just imagine like how it was for me. Like I thought Amazon was like a, a like a knockoff eBay, like a bootleg eBay. Cause at the time <laughs> eBay was the biggest thing. Right. Yeah. So, if you can work for us. I'm like, can't be. Mm -mm, this is <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, uh, long story short, uh, they, they offered me a job and I was just like, ah, I don't know about it. I, I told them no, but they was like, we'll give you some time to think about it. And I, and some, like, I would have these conversations with just random people over the course of that next week. And it was the most random people that I knew in my life that were having the conversation mm -hmm. with me about, you know, what I should do. And it was just out of nowhere. They would just start talking to me about it. And I'm just like, how y'all know I'm trying to are make you, Are you a personable person? Like, do you, are, yeah. are you usually approachable? Yeah, I, so I am for the most part. So it's like, say if I'm going to my homie's house and I, I used to go over there when I was in high school, we go, uh, when I was in college, we used to go play the game, right? Mm -hmm. So I go over there and he'd be like, uh, the dad was like, you know, Keon, what you been up to, man? How's everything going? <laughs> what you're doing after school? I said, yeah, man, some some uh, some company called Amazon or something gave me a job. I said, but I'm not with that, man. I'm, I'm a stay entrepreneur. This is what I'm doing full on. And he was like, man, you got to think about, you know, differently and use this to spark your entrepreneurial stuff and yada, yada, yada. Right. And I was just like, all right, whatever. And then I went to go get a haircut next day. <laughs> My barber is talking to me about it. I was just like, man. And then I think what 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 hit me that this was a sign was, I, I think I was eating somewhere and the, me and the janitor started talking, the custodian of the place started talking. Oh, and man. Started talking. Like, 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 this guy right, comes man, I hear in all these different ways, like my playing game. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I take the job. So for the most part, I spare you the details. Um, so I work for Amazon now. Uh, I'm a project manager there. I've been on Amazon six years. Um, I didn't start off as a project manager. I actually started right. off in the warehouse as a, as a warehouse manager. Um, to me, at that time, I felt like I had signed the deal with the devil. And the reason why I say this is because as an entrepreneur, and uh, you you have this mindset of I'm never working for anybody, right? right? And so like the whole time I'm working, I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? Because you know I'm yeah, working. the structure is like vastly different. My first shift was Friday through Monday, six to six. <laughs> And keep in mind, I was DJ and hosting events. So Friday through Monday, that's peak time, right? Right. And, and I'm working 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I'm like, what? And so I, I'm working this job and I'm just like, why did I do this? Like, I should have been doing this. I should be doing that. But one thing my brother always told me, like, you got to create the environment you want, right? You got to mm -hmm. create the opportunities you want to see. I remember uh, a meeting with Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey said, if you want more people to know your names, then you got to know more people's names. If you want... Um, want people to shake your hand when they see you, you need to shake more hands. Uh, yeah. Probably not with COVID, but you get the idea. Um, <laughs> overall, like I just always kept those things in my mind, and so I turned that situation into a better situation for me. So all that time I had during the week on my off days, I just traveled. I just went everywhere, and I was like, I just want to. I, just I, I remember seeing that. I was like, dang, he is living the life. Yeah, because like I would have people, I would have, I would manage teams, and people say, you know, I don't like this job, or I like the job, but I want to do this, or, or this is what I actually love to do. I said, well, whatever you like to do, use mm -hmm. this job to pay for or sponsor or be your capital for whatever you want to be. You know, a lot of people right. like, you know, they don't want to work a job. I say, well, hey, no one's saying you got to work a job for the rest of your life. All we're saying is whatever you need, get that from that job and then fund your dream, right? So, so you, you start somewhere. Get, exactly. Start somewhere, right? So... Uh, for me, it was a blessing in disguise working for him. I went from working in those warehouses to um, doing doing events, um, running the city of Atlanta, doing events, to I'm running the whole coast. I had California, Nevada, Arizona, and uh, I'm sponsoring and running events in all those states, right? But at the same time, I never stopped my entrepreneurial side. So I'm still, you know, whether it's selling shirts or DJing and traveling or hosting events or being flown out to schools just to talk to colleges about, you know, my journey and my path and stuff like that. Like it, it never changed. Right. So I'm going to always be an entrepreneur, but now it's a 50, 50 split. Right. So now is I'm going to get my money on this side and the money I make from this, I'm going to use to spark all my ideas I have on this side. And so that's, that's where I kind of been um, just for the last few years. Yeah. And from what I hear from those project manager roles and things like that it's like 
you get the tasks done for the day and you have the rest of that day to do what you please. It's very task oriented. So that's, that's good. That's some, one of the things I looked into also. But when those doors shut and you realize that that's just not your calling, mm -hmm. it's going to shut. But very good. I looked into that definitely for sure. So as you have journeyed and become this entrepreneur slash career man, um, has some of your habits changed? Has your environment changed? The people that are around you are surrounding you. Any of that change um, from here? Do you set more intentions or anything of that sort? Um, because, you know, getting to different places is going to require different people. So did any of that change concerning your mindset, like physically and practically? Yeah, for sure. Um, like, just just your everyday interactions with people, you know, they they control how you think, you know, without you even realizing that. So I started surrounding myself with people who are doing things that I wanted to end up doing. Or I started mm -hmm. being in places where the people that uh, were doing things I wanted to do were. And so by doing that, it, it just, in fact, turned into a, I would say, like a funnel. Mm -hmm. And in this funnel, it's me shooting through all the BS that some people go through learning uh in like in a, in a condensed time frame all the stuff that these people have learned you know avoiding all the mistakes they've made and capitalizing on the end goal right so i just know that i had some friends that were on hey i'm turning up every weekend every weekend every weekend but mm -hmm. for me it was just like i'm trying to figure out how i can get the generational wealth right that's what everybody say we want generational wealth but you have to do things to make those steps, right? So I don't knock anybody for going out and turning up. I just knew that wasn't my thing. So if that wasn't my thing, I was gonna kick it with them when I wanted to do that. But if I didn't wanna do that, it was just like, hey, what's up? I'm here if you need you, if you need to talk about something and stuff like that. Other than that, you know, I'm looking for more people who are like-minded, right? So I'm trying to have more of those conversations of how to buy real estate or how to invest in stocks or okay, how to, you know, create LLCs or help other people create LLCs um, when it comes down to traveling. Okay, how do you get the most out of traveling? You know, you start learning about all the other stuff that that's gonna benefit you in the long run. Um, right. A lot of times we learn a lot of stuff that's temporary, that's temporary, uh, is beneficially, it's beneficial temporarily, but as far as long-term, you don't get anything from it, right? It's like, yeah, this helped you this year, but what about something five years from now, 10 years from now that you can pass on? That's the type of stuff. So just interacting with more of those people, um, having more conversations with those people. And um, like during COVID, for example, I got to a space like during quarantine, like California was like really locked down. And it's like, yeah. I just wanted to kind of see what other people are doing, who, who were doing things similar to me. So I started reaching out to DJs and entrepreneurs. And um, I would do like this show on my Instagram where I would just sit down and talk to oh, them. Oh yeah, I I, seen would just, that. I, seen that. I would just ask them questions, right? And the whole time is, I was just, I was just curious. I was curious, right? I was trying to be a sponge. So it's like, I want to know what's your story, right? The right. more I understand about a person, the more I can understand how they move, the more I can understand why they do what they do, what makes them tick. And that's the stuff that, that I'm thrilled by, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm listening to what these people are saying. I'm like, damn, their story is no different than mine. And I'm listening to, mm -hmm. you know, some of the similar points all of them are making. I'm just like, wow, like, this is pretty cool. Like, I, I'm thinking like these people are like so here and I'm and I'm like somewhere right. over here, but there's actually no difference. It's just a matter of repetition, consistency, right. and then the buildup of quality. And then from there, you know, you get to where you want to be. So I feel like at, at, at one point it turned into therapy for me because it's like, all right, cool. Another oh, week wow. we have to sit down and talk. So let's talk about, okay, tell me when this was happening to you. How did you feel? And I'm like, dang, that's how I felt too. Okay, dang, I'm not the only one, so I'm not crazy. You know, right, so. right. Work in progress for sure. Right. right. So I feel the same way, just stepping into my life for entrepreneurship. I think it was a month or so. No, it couldn't have been a month. It could have been like a couple of weeks where I was just wasting time, you know, chilling. But once I really plugged into a mentorship and people surrounded me, like my life advanced with quantum leaps. So with your mindset changing and also seeing the things that life can provide and give to you, yeah. I'm wondering, where do you see yourself in five years? Let, let me ask a cliche question. Where, where do you see this going? What is your ultimate goal? 
Well, not mm-hmm. ultimate, but five years. You know, honestly, like, I, I've i never been able to answer that question. Like, as a kid, my first thing I ever wanted to do was be Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, yeah, you can't do that. And then the next <laughs> thing I wanted to be was a Power Ranger. <laughs> and then it was like, I wanted to be a guy who, who did trash trucks. And I wanted to be a mortician. Then I wanted to be an engineer. It's always changing, right? The more right. you educate yourself, the more you grow and you learn, you're always going to want to do something different or, or go down a different road. So for me, I can't say, hey, what I want to do in five years, because I honestly don't know. But what right. I can say is I want to put myself in a position to be five times better than I am now and okay. also be five times more successful than I am now by doing things that I need to do in order to get there. Um, okay. Okay. Let me flip this question then. What does success look like for you? I think success on, on, on my end of the spectrum would be when, when you can go where you want to go, you don't have to mm-hmm. worry about anything. When, you, when your parents are good, you know, when your family's straight, when you can, if you see something you can buy, uh, when you know you got long-term money set up for, if you have a baby, it's already paid for. If you have to have like a, a medical emergency, the money's there, it's already paid for. When you want, if you want to retire today, like it's already done, like you can retire today and just be full-blown entrepreneur. Like success to me is getting to that particular space to where whatever you want to do, whatever idea you want to have, mm-hmm. It's just a matter of you doing it. It's a matter of you executing, right? Like I see yourself as, as an entrepreneur myself, like I see myself as a product, right? People can't buy the people can't buy what they can't see or they can't buy into what they can't see. So it's on me to continue to refine my product, you know, increase the quality of my product so that no matter what I'm doing, where I'm at, what's going right. on, my product quality is always gonna stay high. So no matter what, people are always gonna pour into me, buy into me, and then and result, you know, continue building, continue growing. That is what's up. I feel like I've learned so much from you in this session and so much about your journey. I got some gems out of it. So excited to pull those out. Um, that is all the questions I have for you today. Um, is there a plug you wanna do at the end? Do you wanna? tell the people about what you're doing, book your shows or anything of that sort? Uh, for the most part, just follow the journey. Uh, if you got any questions, reach out. Like, I've always been an open book, open sponge. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur since I was, what, fourth grade? <laughs> uh, I've started many businesses. Uh, I, I helped pay for school, um, you know, like just through my entrepreneur journey. Um, Sponsored all, all, most of my most of my family, like just like with my parents, with just helping with different stuff, with some of the stuff I was doing um i've always just been a person who's like super supportive and helpful of anybody with a dream um i've never shied anybody away from um uh, from helping if they, if they come to me and ask right uh so if you want to learn more you know you can follow me on instagram at keon hustler k-e-y-o-n-d-a hustler um that's pretty much where probably the only place you can find me uh you can hit me up on linkedin uh i probably won't check it but i'm gonna get better i promise it's been it's been a while <laughs> since i check linkedin yeah uh, but yeah, for the most part, the fastest way to get to me is on Instagram. Uh, or just, if you know me, just hit me. Uh, I didn't have the same yeah, number since yeah. I was 13. So shoot, if you know me, just hit me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, thank you for spending this time with us today. Keon is again yeah. at Keon the Hustler on Instagram. Today's episode is brought to you by GSTW, where we find and fund your passion through e-commerce. Thank okay. you again. Have a good rest of your day. Glad to you. Thank you again.